Hi, in this video I want to show you how to make use of Hairstrand Designer to update an existing mesh such as this one, which is free from Sketchfab. This is one that I made a couple of years back when I initially made Hairstrand Designer, very early version, and as you can see it looks pretty decent. Uh, so I'm just going to download this, it's free to download. And I'm going to try and apply a new texture and things to it. So I'm just going to go for original format and that will give me all the textures and things that are with it. And I can use that as a tracing platform. So it's going to be a show and folder here. Okay, so what you can see is there's a source and textures. So the textures are the texture passes used for this mesh. And you see it's just a simple normal map, uh, the opacity map and the color map. And the rest is driven through some shader things inside Sketch, uh, inside Sketchfab's renderer. And there's the mesh. Okay, so the mesh isn't going to be imported to Hairstrand Designer, but it can be, you know, loaded up inside your 3D application. I'm going to be using Marmoset Toolbag 3 because it's really good for showing off hairs and things like that. It's got a very nice hair renderer and an isotropy type algorithm. So I've got the mesh there. I can import that simply by dragging it in. And it's brought in some of the textures with it. We've got the normal map, Obido, and the alpha map. I'm just going to change this to red channel because it doesn't read the alpha channel. And I want to click on the mesh and do uh, disable callback faces to see both sides. Now you can see the texture for this is just the RGB driven texture map. And that's basically how I managed to change the color was just to tint that. And also I've loaded in a color map as well, but that's all we need for this right now. I'm going to take these textures and put them into uh, Hair Strand Designer in a second. So I'm just going to search for that folder. So this is the latest one here. As you can see, there's a whole lot of older versions of Hair Strand Designer that have been developed over the course of a year and a half. Okay, so some of the new fit features here uh, make it much more usable than before. So what I want to do is load in a UV image. I'm just going to click this icon down here and if I search for my downloads and look for any one of these textures, I guess the opacity is probably a good one to use. Okay, so you see how this has been laid out, very old school. I'm just going to bring the strands down to zero so we can see that. So I have a heavy bunch, uh, a little bit of gaps here and there. And I don't think I use them all in the end, but I'll try and mimic what I see here as best as possible. So I'm just going to increase the number of strands. Uh, let's say for set one, I'll do quite a lot of strands. And I'm just going to put it on medium mode just to see a bit more detail. And I want to make it really thin. So the thin range, I'm going to make one and maybe three or four. Okay, four is good. And I'll make the root and tip a bit thinner. Maybe the root can be a little bit on the thicker side. Okay, let's just check it out in slow mode. That looks fine. I can change the opacity of the UV image here. Now it's just a little bit slow in slow mode, so I'll put it in fast mode again. I can use the mouse wheel up to increase the number of strands that I see. And I think I'm going to change the colors a bit. I'll make the background uh, completely black. So I'll bring the value right down, make it easier to see. Let's change these to colors that, that I can at least read for now. You'll find that using Hair Strand Designer, you'll have to hold the button down a little bit longer than normal if you've got a machine like mine, which needs updated. Okay, just some crazy colors just now. So I want to position each set so I can just Use the use the distancing to get them quite close. But if not, because I'm on set one, I can actually just move it manually here like this. If I click on set two now. Set three. Uh, and I think I'll let them share space because it will give it a bit more variation. Set four is that one, set five. Let's 
to do five and six sharing. Make it a little bit busier. And uh, we've got a bit of room for another couple. So eight. I'm just going to move set nine right over to where set one is to help it out. and 11 looks like it's just a single strand so I can click in here and make it one you see that changed everything there because it's uh, still got a few teething problems just click off that and just bring those back up again okay I think using the slider is the best way right now. Some of the text boxes haven't been looked at in detail, but everything's usable. Okay, so I'm going back to set one and change the spacing a bit. And the number of strands is 70. That's probably enough. If I do mouse wheel up, I can get more detail with control, but without control, I can see more strands as a preview. Let's do the second set here, so this one. We're at 445 strands to be generated, as it says down the bottom here. So that's not too bad. Just gonna keep that fairly within reason there. Um, let's hover over these to see which number that is, so number eight. I'm gonna move this over a bit. And maybe number 11 just needs to move a slight bit to match that one a bit better. Okay, that should be enough for a test. There might be gaps here and there, but let's just give it a color pass test. So I'll click on color map. Let's put it in fast mode just to get a little bit more optimization from it. And I'm going to click generate. Another thing you'll notice is the, the length of the strands is a bit different, so I'm going to adjust that. Okay, I'm just going to preview how that looks. Yeah, that looks pretty funky. Some waviness in there as well. We're using the multi-strand mode, which is now the default, because we get some really nice uh, individual hairs down here, and they can appear up and things like that. And I think it adds a bit more variety. So a couple of things I'm going to do after looking at that is I'm going to increase the variation a little bit, just to give them a bit more a change in scale and things and I'll change the length just to the point where they meet the bottom there. Let's put it on slow mode to see how that all looks and I think that looks fine. I'll go ahead and generate again. Okay so we've got an AO pass here. Now this is a slightly new AO algorithm for the multi-strand mode. So I'm just going to blur that a tiny bit We've got a depth map, color map, mask map, and our normal map. Our normal map, I'm going to blur it a tiny bit as well, so just one little click on the blur. You can click it for longer and it will blur it even more, but I'll do one tiny more bit. And quite happy with that, so I'm just going to export HST, let's do it October 25v2. Okay, so it's done all that and it's still kept the textures intact as well. So everything should be good. If I was to come back and process more images, more passes, it should look the same. Let me know if it's not. This is a very early release, so uh, let's check this out. So we're going to close. Uh, I can always test these things as well. So I'm going to go back to the tool bag here and let's just load up our version 2. See what the alpha looks like. Is it different? Okay, it looks the same. That's good going. Normal map version 2. And I guess spec map, I could grab the depth. Play around with those. 
and I do have an ambient occlusion map as well. So occlusion and this one goes a little bit darker. You may want to play around with that those values. Okay, so specular intensity for now, um, but we don't have any anisotropic setup. So if you change Lambertian to um, subsurface scatter for one, you will get a little bit of subsurface with thin hairs, not as much as maybe skin or something because it's not as dense, um, but you'll get a little bit. And we can change this reflection to anisotropic and that will give us the anisotropic hair banding we need. Now we've got an optional directional map. Now I never generated one, at least I don't think I did. So let's go back and generate that. So I'll just kick up and kick open hair strand designer from the tool that made it. That's Game Maker Studio by the way. And I'm just gonna load in that file, that V2 file. Okay, so we get everything the same, even the maps that I chose to render. Uh, I'm just gonna put it on fast mode. And all I want really is the other map. I want the frizz map and the flow map actually. So these two would be good and generate those. Okay, now I can export them individually or I can export the, uh, this way with the exports, the file and these. So I'll just call this um, 25 extras. Just in case there's any discrepancies, which I hope there isn't. Okay, so I've got my two flashes there for the maps. Just wait on this message disappearing. There we go. So that's them saved. I'll just come out of this now. Back into toolbag. And I'm gonna load in the flow map. You can choose to swap directions and things like that here as well. But I think this is the right direction, I think. Um, let's have a look at the other map that I loaded. That was uh, that we can use a secondary reflection. Let's do anisotropic again. And I guess I could put in anything here. I'm gonna put in the frizz map just to see what I get. You see, I get a nice little bit of frizziness. So it just kind of throws it around. This gives me something for an extra bit of uh, differentiation. Okay, I'm not too happy with the color. So I could tint it here. But it still looks a little bit like straw here. I guess the hairs aren't dense enough. normal map, see what I get with and without it. Could try putting the frizz map in. Yeah, yeah, that's not quite as good as it. Okay, bring that back. I think we may have a crash. Yeah, crashed out. I tried to undo the texture being um, Rechosen, and I guess that didn't like that very much. So let's load that up again and import model. Let's just uh, go to the mesh and turn off callback faces. Uh, I can start to load in the textures again. Now I want to jump back to Game Maker um, Hair Strand Designer for a second just to make a different color of the hair. So I can just load in one of those files. So I can load in the, the extras one, which was the latest, and play with the colors a bit. I don't want these, I just want the color map. 
And I just want to make one colours quite nice, so I'll go for a dark brownish backdrop. Variation tone, let me just click that so that I can pick it. And this one, I can pick that as well, make it a little bit brighter. Root tone, I'm just going to make that black. And the tip tone, I'll pick that colour there and make it a bit brighter. Let's change some coverage and things. I'm just going to put it onto slow mode so I can see more strands. I think that looks a lot better. Okay, so I'm just going to export the colour map. So I'll just generate and it will just generate that one. Okay, and I'm just going to export that single image. And this will be extras color. I guess I could save this over the extras file. Okay, I'm going to exit. Get that done. I'm going back in here. I'm going to load in the color map. This would be a better colour for that. And then the alpha. Change this to the red channel. And a gloss map. Gloss we can make as frizz. Specular we can make as depth. You can also experiment with either of those to see which one you prefer. I think that looks nicer being brown. Uh, this hair could have been layered up much more to be honest. This is an old, old, very first version of hair that I did and I have missed a lot of uh, places where there'd be more flyaway hairs but it's really just a demo to show you what's possible. Alright, so let's load in, uh, just make sure we've got the right normal map. Got the gloss map there, that's we use the frizz for that. The alpha map. Let's add the occlusion map. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna change some things, so subsurface scatter, we can play around with some of that. It's nice to see it kind of warms up some area, but it does kill the normal map a little bit, so it, idea to be careful with that and if I actually have a scatter map or anything like that I guess I could bring in the frizz as a fuzz map and then reduce that a bit I'm going to change this to anisotropic Let's just add a light to actually see what's happening here. things that much to be honest because it doesn't uh, it doesn't deviate enough going in a straight direction it's look a little bit plasticky here so I'm just going to add a secondary reflection and we can do the same thing again or we can go for a mirror 
do a blend form. But I'll do a double anisotropy. I think it's just a little too glossy that it's looking a bit plasticish. I think something like that works now. I'm just going to duplicate the mesh, and just move it a little bit just to get that idea of it being a little bit more busy. And if I scale it down a bit. Yeah, that just helps make it look a little bit more layered but ideally you would layer things up anyway let's add another light let's add a light this way do a, do a directional light okay i'm just going to darken the background so we can see that a bit better And I'll put the directional light under the sky so that when I rotate, it also rotates. Now I can play with the settings even more. You can see how that really affects things. But I think it looks pretty decent for a first attempt at making hair and using something that makes the textures a lot easier to make. Uh, some things I could take away from this is I could get away with more finer hairs and some things I need to watch is the cut through of different textures because you get this straight line from it but you can have a go at making your own textures and things like that and see how how you feel about using uh, this workflow you see I can make some nice tints to the hair as well uh, also, this works quite nicely in shaders that I've created in Unreal Engine and for Unity. The Unreal Engine one's called Stylize Hair Shader, and that will use the RGB mask that, that Hair Strand Designer generates. So it gives you even more customization of the root and tip tones. Um, and for Unity, it's Hair Shader 2. It also works in HDRP and it looks quite nice. It's part of the Human Shader pack with us skin and other things, other shaders, eyes, and yeah, pretty cool. So I hope you enjoy watching this video. Uh, I hope you enjoy using Hair Strand Designer. Sorry about the little hitches back there, but I will do my best to make better videos in the future. This is the first of many. Thanks for watching, bye.